Hello, I'm High Heel Knight. Welcome to my channel. These are my thoughts on WWE TLC Tables, Ladders, Chairs 2018. If you just want to know the results, uh, the results are Buddy Murphy retained his Cruiserweight Championship over Cedric Alexander. Elias defeated Bobby Lashley in a ladder match. Finn Balor defeated Drew McIntyre with a little bit of outside interference with Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Daniel Bryan retained his championship against AJ Styles. Uh, Natalia defeated Ruby Wright in a tables match, and she also put in the other two members of the Wright squad through tables throughout the match. Ronda Rousey retained her championship against Nia Jax. Tamina was no significant interference or uh, factor at all. Uh, Rey Mysterio defeated Randy Orton in a chair match with a nice surprise roll-up, but... He just won the match straight up. The Bar defeated the New Day and the Usos to retain their championship. Uh, Fabulous Truth defeated Mahalisha to win the Mixed Match Challenge Season 2. Braun Strowman defeated Baron Corbin in a TLC match in which neither a table nor a ladder were involved. But yes, Braun Strowman won that match, so Baron Corbin is no longer Raw uh, General Manager, and Braun Strowman will officially... Challenge Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble for the Universal Championship. Dean Ambrose won over Seth Rollins to become the brand new Intercontinental Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. And Asuka won her TLC match, which did involve a table, a ladder, and a chair, and kendo sticks, along with some outside interference by Ronda Rousey. She is now the new SmackDown Women's Champion. So, this essay is called Norway or Nothing at All. It refers to the R&B group TLC song Waterfalls, as in uh, folks going after whatever they want despite the consequences, despite not uh, knowing better or often knowing better, and still soldiering on anyway. And that's how I feel about this pay-per-view and definitely how I feel about TLC in general. First of all, uh, TLC as a whole has become my least uh, anticipated pay-per-view of the year because for one thing I don't like having two TLC matches in one night it just makes the match special less special I hate it when they double uh, main event whatever the special attraction uh, match is second of all I hate it when a TLC match doesn't involve climbing a ladder to retrieve something what's the point of having a ladder there if they're not going to climb to retrieve something third I hate it when it's a one-on-one -on -one TLC match there have been good one-on-one -on -one TLC matches like uh, Edge versus John Cena, that was wonderful, but still, a TLC match is going to be chaotic and crazy and wild and things almost constantly happening all around the ring. Uh, so when uh, the women had their uh, TLC match, that's the way it's supposed to be, as opposed to uh, Seth Rollins and Baron Corbin's TLC match from the week prior, which was nice, but still it wasn't as cr uh, crazy and chaotic as a real pay-per-view TLC match should be. So yes, the WWE just soldiered on and pretty much everything that... I thought was going to happen as far as who won, what happened. Uh, and I'm going to just talk about five particular matches and five matches I was most interested in. I'm not a wrestling analysis. I've been watching W for 30 years, so that's, I'm just a fan. But still, there are only five matches I really cared about anyway, so I might as well just talk about those five matches. So I'm going to start with The Bar versus The New Day versus The Usos. Now, the WWE has a terrible habit of having the same competitors fight each other again and again and again and again and again and again and again, which is, you know, refers to the whole your way or nothing at all. you got a whole giant roster of people. You even force your rosters or superstars to not uh, compete with other companies. Uh, you just buy them up and basically have them sell the shelf for a long period of time because and not let them get, uh, get exposure or whatever. So why not use them? But, you know, uh, you keep having the same matches fight over and over again. But with the bar, with the New Day, with the Usos, their matches are always entertaining, always exciting. Uh, each team can have a good match with just about anybody. So when you put uh, them mixed up within each other, uh, it's always wonderful. So on that front, I was looking forward to it. On that front, I was very happy and satisfied. The only thing I didn't like was the inconsistency of these triple threat tag team match. I mean, sometimes uh, one team or, or multiple tag team match. Uh, the, the team's on the outside waiting to be hopefully tagged in while the uh, uh, other competitors uh, compete. And then there are times when all the teams have a member inside the match 
and they can just tag their own partners. I wish the WWE would make a decision and stick with it. It's so annoying to watch these other teams just waiting for the outside. And then there, even this match, there was a point where uh, the wrong person, I think Kofi Kingston was being declared the official person, but even though he wasn't, so that really bugged me. But yeah, but the matches are fine. But yeah, I really wish the WWE would decide either all the participants are to be in these uh, triple threat or four on match or however many multiple tag team matches are, or there's going to be all people on the outside waiting. I just wish they would make a decision and go with it. Next up, we have the Fabulous Truth versus Mahalisha. And normally, I wouldn't look forward to uh, a match with any of these competitors, but I love the first season of Mixed Match Challenge. This season of Mixed Match Challenge was longer and so problematic because there are so many changes due to injury or illness or storylines. I mean, there were two changes before the event even started. So hopefully if they do a third tournament, uh, there'll be, be, be a nice condensed like the first season. That way it won't be as many changes. And hopefully they can have the winners be whoever they want to be. I refuse to believe that the when they made up this tournament that they were going to have R-Truth and Carmella win this thing, especially when they added the idea that whoever won the tournament there would be the uh, 30th entry into the Royal Rumbles. Now, as much as I respect our truth in his work, and I do like how Carmella has become better over time, and uh, Jinder Mahal, say what you will, he did uh, his best being WWE Champion, and you got to admire somebody who biggest moment before becoming WWE Champion was uh, participating in the WLC match, which is a match that he technically wasn't a participant of. But anyway, yeah, he became ch uh, WWE Champion and did what the best he could. And Alicia Fox, terrible wrestler, but she's been with the company for 10 years, so she uh, has, obviously has something else. But anyway, you know none of those four people are going to win the Royal Rumble? How am I supposed to get excited about this? The only way I'm excited about this match because I do like mixed match challenge. I like the concept, I like and I like seeing it, and I like when the microphones are on the athletes instead of the uh, commentators and the commentators, uh, uh, and it's more about the uh, athletes uh, bantering with each other. I like that, but still, you, no, no one for those are going to win the Royal. Plus, they each had the second worst records going into the uh, tournament style of the season. Okay, they each going in had a one and three record. And then they wind up beating like last year's winners with uh, Miz and Asuka. That just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> congratulations to these uh, four people for getting a featured match on a pay per view. You know, great for on that front, but still, you know, none of these people are going to win the World Rumble, so it doesn't really matter which one they win. So yeah, Fabulous Truth won, and their big prize, along with being uh, <clears throat> going into the World Rumble, is number thirty. Assuming they stay healthy with all these injuries and illnesses that going around, <laughs> is that they get an uh, all expensive train trip anywhere in the world. And our truth chose Stanford, Connecticut, the WWE headquarters. <laughs> now, I honestly, thought that he was going to choose uh, uh, San Jose because that's the city that the TLC participated. I thought he was going to choose where they already were, but no, they're going to go to WWE headquarters. And I kind of want. Uh, look forward to that. They'll probably do something crazy answers. But I would love, absolutely positively love, if our troop walked right up to Vince McMahon and asked, when was the last time a black male athlete had a televised one-on-one -on -one WWE championship match whose name was not Dwayne Johnson? Okay, I would love for him to ask that. And if anyone out there knows that answer, please tell me, when was the last time a black male competitor had a one-on-one -on -one televised, that's television, that's pay-per-view, shoot, I don't even take streaming at this point, televised one-on-one -on -one match for the WWE Championship. It could be the WWF Championship, it could be the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, you know, whatever was the brand, you know, the face of the, you know, face championship, when was the last time a black male had a one-on-one -on -one match for the WWE title whose name was not Dwayne Johnson? I want to know. <laughs> Next up, we got Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin. And, of course, the big question was, was uh, Braun Strowman going to show up or was there going to be some type of substitution? I kind of hope there would be a substitution with, say, like Bray Wyatt or something like that. Uh, but still, Braun Strowman did show up. 
and he got a lot of nice outside interference from various other people who Baron Corbin had crossed over his time as uh, the Raw general manager elect. And it was uh, very interesting, very fun. And again, it's the one TLC match that did involve a table or a ladder. It was just chairs, chairs, chairs. But still, uh, they definitely uh, took a bunch of lemons and made lemonade. Because you know when they first booked that match, they were uh, had this kind of plan in mind. So uh, seeing Braun Strowman just basically just walk to the ring and put his big foot on top of Barry Corbin and all the other athletes cheering about and, and participating, that was a nice surprise. I didn't know how they're going to handle this, uh, but that was very good. That was a nice genuine, oh, I'm genuinely surprised about what happened here. Next, we have Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. And Dean Ambrose won, and he just won. He just beat Seth Rollins. No crazy outside interference, no crazy weapon use, no uh, dastardly cheating, no hitting uh, where he should be hitting or things like that. Dean Ambrose just won. Okay, that's nice, uh, but, you know, <laughs> I was expecting a lot more, and the crowd especially a lot more, uh, considering that it was now four hours into this five-hour pay-per-view, and they decided to have a much more cerebral, psychological match as opposed to a, just a straight-up brawl, 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 brawl. You know, now that kind of match might be fine if it's in the beginning hour of the program, or at least within the first two hours of this five-hour <laughs> wrestling show. But no, after four hours, and definitely after the exciting um, WWE uh, title match, no, you uh, you need to spice this up. You need to have them just go at it or make it short and make it something short. Or maybe just Seth Rollins does something really out of character or, or out of sorts and Dean Ambrose takes advantage of it. I was hoping that Renee Young would be a factor in this match. I thought that maybe they would fall to the outside, go near the uh, uh, announce table, and uh, Renee Young might be in danger or might cause a distraction or, or somebody said something to her. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, she winds up getting involved directly or indirectly in the match, and that will lead to Dean's uh, victory. And who knows, maybe that happened down the line. But yeah, just Dean won, and the match itself, if you take the match like just by itself, it's fine. But yeah, after four hours, you, you got to spice this up. In fact, I took a nap during the Daniel Bryan, uh, AJ Styles match, because I knew Daniel Bryan would win. So I literally just set my uh, clock. I took a 15-minute nap during that match, because I was tired. I had the privilege of taking a nap. The audience did it. So yeah, uh, when they were chanting, this is boring, this is boring, not necessarily boring, but after four hours, yeah. <laughs> and finally, the main event, Asuka versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Very exciting. Very chaotic. This is how a TLC match should be. You need to have things just going on all the time. You need to have chaos going all the time. You just need to have action going on practically all the time. That was wonderful. And then the caveat with Ronda Rousey just walking out, knocking over Charlotte Flair and uh, Becky Lynch over the ladder and walking right back, just totally <laughs> just in and out. That was wonderful. Uh, Rousey got a couple of boos, but that's fine because uh, she didn't like gloat or anything like that. She just walked in, did an interference, walked out. Asuka is finally champion. And of course, uh, part of the storyline would be that she uh, won due to outside interference. And, you know, it sort of taints her championship. I don't care. Asuka's finally championship. I like Asuka. I like Becky Lynch. I like Charlotte Flair. But still, it is past Asuka's time to be the champion. So I'm very happy about that. I'm very excited how the women are going forward. Definitely one thing the WWE has been doing well with these ladies is uh, modifying their story because they definitely wanted Becky Lynch to be a heel. They definitely wanted Charlotte Flair to be a face, but they did have to make a change. But yeah, if they had their way, you know, their, their way or nothing at all, they would have kept things pretty rigid and Oscar probably wouldn't even be champion right now, but still, um, yeah, so on that front, wonderful match. Great way to cap off a very long night. Five hours is too long, okay? They need to make some serious changes, so hopefully, Tonight with the WWE Raw, they'll finally start moving in some creative in different directions. We'll see. But as far as uh, the TLC of this year, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my nap. <laughs> and uh, I do uh, look forward to Royal Rumble coming up, even though I know our truth is not going to win 
and Carmella's not going to win. Okay, Carmella already won the first women's money in the bank match twice, so <laughs> those folks are going to win. But hey, if someone out there knows about, you know, black male one-on-one, -on -one, not Dwayne Johnson, WWE Championship televised match, let me know. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for watching. These are my thoughts on WWE TLC Tables, Ladders, Chairs 2018. I'm Hyphil Knight. Remember, find inspiration everywhere. <laughs>